In my last video I discussed why Huawei was forced to venture into the automotive industry and basically develop their own operating system for cars and why this might actually be a threat to consider for Tesla and also for NIO. And this video is about the topic why is NIO actually bringing out or working at least on its own phone. So we have the update by Jin Li Hong who just mentioned that in Q2 um, the phone will be started to you know, have internal testing. So we don't know when it will be launched but anyways um, NIO is working on that. We have the rumors. So here I will be discussing why I think that Huawei's move but not only Huawei's move actually um, is one of the reasons among many reasons why NIO is actually bringing out a NIO phone. So here we go and once again please watch my other video I will link it here if you haven't about the details about Huawei um, operating system why it was launched and you know what does it do and why Huawei is therefore becoming a player in the automotive industry. The bottom line is that this should potentially worry Tesla and NIO which have closed systems so they are developing their own in-car systems where other um, vendors like Apple or uh, Huawei have no way of accessing the display and also functionalities of the car but then you know this could also put pressure on companies like this or any legacy automaker as well who is also not allowing um, third parties to access the car um, because ultimately smartphone manufacturers have very large um, existing user bases and we see that this is now the age where smartphone um, companies are increasingly uh, trying to get into the automotive industry. We have rumors since very very long time about the Apple car so we don't really know whether or not you will actually start to produce a car, right? Um, however, of course, Apple CarPlay is already a quite sought after feature, I would say. Uh, many people are using Google Maps also in their um, in their car because it's simply the best way to navigate. And then um, I posted this one also on my Twitter this weekend. Um, Xiaomi is entering uh, the uh, automotive industry. This is a um, a leak I should say um, kind of a if the the model 3 a Porsche and the Neo ET5 would have a a child and possibly it would be the Xiaomi car it seems we will find out more when they release it and then as I've just pointed out on the left hand side um, Huawei um, also venturing into this industry amongst others so you know this is kind of the competitive landscape that is really heating up in China and is um, possibly the most competitive environment actually in the entire world. I think um, Elon Musk just admitted that as well during the earnings call and and we cannot longer really limit the car industry just to automotive manufacturer. Pretty much this is now dominated increasingly by tech companies. Um, pretty much also interesting why um, I just made a LinkedIn post on this about the weekend um, over the weekend that um, the new CEO of Volkswagen, he basically said like my predecessor, Dies, uh, he tried to turn Volkswagen into a tech company, um, but we couldn't find any common ground any longer. And we are ultimately now going back to the car, you know, to the product and not becoming a tech company. However, you know, if you look at the Chinese market, people are buying um, EVs like smartphones. And if you have a kind of outdated um, EV to offer, um, and that has become a challenge uh, for Tesla as well, frankly, in the last couple of um, months, then... Um, yeah, it's like uh, buying the old uh, smartphone in a way and the Chinese consumer are very, very, um, how do you say, spoiled um, because they have a large offering. And so within this new competitive landscape, you need to think about solutions. And I think Neo did just that um, about the Neo phone, uh, which I think partly is a answer to this um, big threat by smartphone companies and tech companies coming all into this um, automotive industry here. So we had this kind of a um, Easter egg, if you will, during the last Neo day, um, where we had some in the ES8 uh, they shown a mock up of um, phones in there. We don't know, is this the Neo phone or not? I'm actually quite undecided so far. Um, 
how it's going to look. Will it be an actual phone? I always said like I could also imagine that it might be more of an, you know, a device that might be an external extension of Nomi, um, you know, the, this little gadget, the smart digital assist within the car. Maybe they think about how they can transfer Nomi outside of the car. But what we know for sure is that they have been hiring, for example, the former um, chief um, of Meitu, that's a Chinese um, AI app, um, also quite um, famous actually, and um, yeah, quite um, advanced, I should say. Um, they have hired them for, for their phone developments, and we have some leaks here of some um, trademark applications that included Neo Buds, so Hearing Buds, Neo Watch, um, and then also Neo Phone ultimately, and Sky UI. What could this potentially be? Um, so as you can see, this is even a little bit more than just about the new phone. It's uh, it's rather bringing out a whole range of new hardware here. And um, what I mentioned in my last video about Huawei, uh, one of those um, aspects that I think are decisive here is that it's actually working in sync between different devices, seamless and uh, you know, kind of an operating system across an entire suite of different hardware devices. And this brings me back to the very core of the Neo business model. I'm always trying to say on this channel that I also, for one, I don't think Neo is like Tesla, um, having a very different business model. And you also need to recognize where Neo is born from and you know where Lee Bin is coming from. He is an internet platform entrepreneur. It's more coming from the e-commerce kind of thinking. And as I like to stress the fact here, Neo is thinking more about the, the customer lifetime value, basically, increasing all of these metrics in order cars and the users are only the install base but then you want to get as many transactions with as many average uh, volume as possible and with a better um, gross margin and with a long duration so less of a churn rate right and if you have this in mind this is actually pretty much like um, how platform strategies, especially in China, are working. Um, we, for example, here this is Meituan, which also, um, you know, is a is a, a kind of a super app like um, WeChat, like. Um, Alipay, where you find lots of different services inside. For example, you can hire, you can rent a bike, you can um, you can uh, deliver food, you can find uh, massage services, whatever. There's lots of things to do, and this is also what. Um, Westerners typically have issues with about grasping their heads around um, why Chinese are operating like this, um, offering such many different services. I often hear the criticism about Neo, like why do they make so many models? Why do they um, not only sell cars and concentrate on scaling cars? And this is because they think like uh, internet platform businesses and actually because the competition in China is so fierce, um, you have basically no chance of surviving if you don't bring your customer acquisition costs down and if you are not um, really present in many different services. And that is, for example, why companies like Meituan um, is actually even happy to acquire um, platforms that are itself um, or services that are itself not profitable, but uh, the way that they can acquire customers just via another service to offer um, and then cross-sell between their ecosystem and platform this is what ultimately makes those platforms really, um, you know, hard to leave at some point in time because you basically find everything on this platform, and that is actually the the, the current thinking about Neo itself as well. You want to drive down your customer acquisition costs by offering different types of services and products. For example, a new buyer of a Neo watch or a, a Neo phone could potentially, at some point, you know, it will download a Neo app, will become part of the community at some point in time, may recommend it to friends, may buy a car, who knows, may use some of the services like in a Neo house or something like this. You know, at some point, all of this is coming together, but each of these sectors may um, look a little bit like um, useless to itself. However, if you think it through, um, it's uh, greatly helping to build those ecosystems that are kind of like a walled garden and that are really difficult to create. And then again, 
this is what Chinese companies do in order to stay in business against all of these uh, competitors. Like in the uh, EV sector, there are hundreds of startups um, selling cars. You cannot differentiate anymore only by selling cars. Um, this will become increasingly difficult and the margins will go down. So what uh, those companies need to do is go more um, into the horizontal and then offer different services and at some point in time also increase the depth vertically in each of these services being offered. And so we see this now, what's happening, for example, with Huawei. This is a more, um, you know, schematic um, approach here. The cell phone and the car are kind of becoming one thing because uh, in both ways you have an app player, uh, which is kind of, you know, the, the front end, like videos, um, uh, entertainment, those kind of things. It can both happen on your cell phone as well as on your car. You have a back end. It's basically, you know, uh, accessing some of the, for example, the ECU, so the, um, uh, the, the very internal functions of the car uh, and also um, you know that the kind of the SDK where um, programmers and developers can actually build applications upon and you have the operating system la layer which can access different functions for example loudspeakers and stuff like that so ultimately and so once again coming back to this patent applications or trademark applications that I can see here um, this at least that's how I am reading it. You know, I could be totally wrong about it. But the fact that Neo is working on different of these product uh, products here is telling me that they are um, kind of creating a competitor here to the Huawei operating system or similarly, let's say, expanding. You know, they're going the other way around. They're expanding their Neo OS that's currently just in the car or maybe even uh, on top of that if you want to count it in the Neo app and they're going to expand it into other services and offerings and products so that it's ultimately becoming a much larger thing that is interoperable and um, you know has these um, many more touch points with users that once again fits perfectly with the um, business model of generating as many touch points with the users and generating a, um, a little transaction and so this is consequentially just the extension or build up and um, yeah enlargement of the, the neo ecosystem here with the pillars like the network community e-commerce marketplace in which we have things like like the neo communities events activities and shopping so namely neo life right uh, while the infrastructure this is more like the the things that you can touch like the neo houses neo cars and in the future possibly neo watch and the phone um, these are the real world goods um, that make everything else possible and then of course you have a data la layer all of these gadgets and all of these services are generating data points at some point in time neo will know a lot about their users and that's also um, coming back to the business case why I see um, you know some prospective good revenue streams coming in for Neo uh, on the Neo Life and Neo e-commerce side because fundamentally at some point in time Neo has created a system that both brands really want to sell into because these are very affluent users and at the same time um, Neo will open it up I think to merchants and to um, even their users uh, you know just providing the platform on which others can uh, can build value upon um, and I think it will actually happen also cross-border between um, China and global markets and so this takes some time to build and this really you know uh, needs some infrastructure like the houses like the cars like um, those neo gadgets in order to become a real thing and I think it is in a good tradition like some of those internet platforms like Baidu, uh, WeChat, Tencent and Meituan here and how they are working. So that's it for now my first thoughts about Neo Phone and where it's coming from from a business model perspective. Um, I'm surely we'll, we'll make more videos on that in the future. I hope you find this insightful. By the way you can support this channel if you like um, via Patreon. Uh, I also appreciate if you smash a like and share this content and um, for Patreon by the way I've just uh, posted this in the uh, for the 10 US dollar tiers I just made another a 30 minute deep dive into Shinlei, which by the way is one of the largest um, offerings in the area of edge compu computing and cloud computing by now in China um, with the likes of Alibaba, Tencent and Baidu and so on. So quite exciting. Have a look if you're a patron. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.